Hi there guys, Neil Atta Tally Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. Now, as you saw from the thumbnail, we have a very poorly GTV behind me. It has unfortunately been involved in an accident. Now, it has been sat with me for a week. Um, I've been on holiday, so I did have a quick sort of 30 second uh, look at it. And it is quite bent, so um, let's have a look at it and see if this is salvageable. So yes, it has had quite a nasty uh, bump. Uh, you can never tell how bad it is with these GTVs because the bonnets always spring back into position because they're made of fiberglass. And uh, yeah, down there, it's looking rather bent. Um, looking at it, I'd say that chassis leg has gone down as well as twisted in. The front bonnet support has been ripped off its mount entirely. It's been crushed here as well, so that is also bent back. So this headlight, basically everything on the front end needs to come off so we can see how bad it is. So yes, it has had quite a big bump, but um, before we strip it down, let's talk about, is it worth saving? I mean, it's a, it's a two and a half thousand pound car, probably something like that for retail, sort of selling privately or something like that. Um, it's done 136,000 miles. When I started it up for the first time in a week, the variator was noisy, um, but you know, somebody loves it. It's worth saving because it's another modern classic left on the road and these GTVs are getting really rare now. So let's get it on the ramp, strip some off it and see if we can see how much more damage has been caused to it. Now GTVs are actually really robust cars when it comes to crashing at the front. They are like made of rocks. So to get a car to be this damaged, it must have hit at about 25, 30 miles an hour I'd say to cause this damage. I have bought plenty in the past and they have shown no damage to the chassis rails or the front panel even though the front bumper is smashed to smithereens so um, this car has had a very good impact indeed. Stripping it down started with undoing the front bolts at the front and then there are four Phillips screws one on each side of the bumper and then two on the bottom of the bumper. Most of the time you find the two nuts on the bottom of the bumper are actually missing seems to have bent these bolts so you can't even lift them out easily anyway. And a little bit of force with me pry bar, they've come out. And I was most surprised when I come to take these off and those two bolts were still there. Ah, it's raining glass and debris on me. Look at all that glass on the floor there. Another fine mess which is going to take me days to clear up. Um, we are going to have to repair this wiring here though because I bet that's took a, a bit of a hammering there. I know, all okay, maybe one wire I want sorting out. Um, so now let's get rid of the uh, excess debris, the broken lights, let's pull the radiator off and uh, see how bent it is underneath. I may even cut this front bar off here just so we have a little bit better access. And yes, it looks like I'm being a little bit rough with these damaged parts. They are all going in the bin. They're all beyond repair. So nobody in the comments section tell me off saying you're not treating that car with respect. It's because they're all damaged and they're going in the bin. So I had a well-deserved week off last week, went to Montenegro, which is near Croatia. 
Um, spent a few days there in the sun. The weather wasn't the greatest, unfortunately, but we did do a trip to Dubrovnik, which is the medieval city used in Game of Thrones, and we got to see the uh, the steps of shame. Shame. Quite an enjoyable week, really. Really enjoyed it. It was uh, well worth the trip out. While you guys in England had that massive rainstorm, we had a massive thunderstorm and a huge downpour for one whole day. And we got to see some uh, nice lightning strikes. So I got a chance to uh, recharge my batteries. I'm now back and raring to go. I suppose the big question is, does it still have water in it? I think it does. Well, I suppose that's one promising factor is it still has water in it. And I mean, literally water, no coolant in that at all. So let's drain that out now and then we can pull the radiator off and hopefully we can see the extent of all the crash damage. It didn't have much water left in it, so it has definitely been leaking. If this one comes out without snapping, I'll be amazed. Well, hey, looks like we've done it. Now these normally weld themselves to the uh, radiator, so uh, they're normally very difficult to get out. And the other blessing with this one is that the um, AC isn't gassed up. It should just pop off now. There we go. One more rad hose to disconnect at the top, a few electrical connections on the radiator, and it should hopefully drop down now. So, the radiator is no longer connected to the mount, so it should come out quite easy. We've just got one more hose here to undo, if I can get into it. Still okay, just a bit of pink here, um, so that's going to want changing as well. Let's get the rest of this brad out. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and pull this part forwards so I can have access this chassis leg and stop it being so bent back. Didn't want to pull it too hard as it was on the ramp and I didn't want to pull it off. And as you can see, yes, I was tugging on the bonnet cable a little bit there, but it was all perfectly fine. So, it is still very bent. Um, so the front support panel is pushed in because of the kink there, you know that. This part here is all twisted and bent down. So that means probably most of the chassis leg is bent down as well. Hopefully it hasn't caused any damage up here. Uh, quick look under here as it's now all apart. Um, I've noticed it does have a equal length manifold on it. Um, we've got a crack here and oil leak coming down there, but more than likely it's from the rocker gasket. Um, under here, yeah, you can see it's bent in there again as well. Um, you can see from underneath how much that chassis leg has bent in there. 
Can't really see anything else untoward here. Um, yeah, it's bent there in as well. There's a crumple there. But underneath it, it's got a reasonably new performance exhaust on it and catalytic converter. It's all been under sealed. I can't see if it's been welded or not really. I'm not looking that deeply into it, to be honest. Uh, there's nothing else here which is telling me there's going to be anything else wrong with it. So it is purely just the front end that needs fixing. Best. But the best case scenario is let's drill out the front panel along here. We're going to have to remove everything to do with the bonnet catches as well. And then hopefully this can be straightened out a little bit better. So what I'm going to have to do is finish the video here because I need to show the customer my findings to see if he wants to get it repaired. It's a big job to repair it because of how bent that chassis leg is. If you'd have crashed it two more inches over, the damage would have been mainly to this centre panel here and that would have meant it was a dead easy job to repair. But unfortunately, it has twisted that chassis leg quite badly. Yes, it is repairable, but it's going to cost quite a bit of money to repair this. So I'm going to have to end the video here so I can show the customer the video. You guys let me know in the comments below whether you think this should be fixed or not. I mean, at the end of the day, this is at most a two and a half, three grand car, and it's going to cost at least 60% of that to get this repaired. So uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. It was beyond economical repair, but the customer is actually repairing it. So today we're going to get this front end off it and see if we can get it a little bit straighter. So as you recall, just give you a little bit of a reminder underneath it. It is a little bit bent in this corner here. So what I've got to do is I have got to uh, drill through all these welds and try and get this front end off. The one thing that has been worrying me is how am I going to get in to drill those off down there? So um, that's going to be a bit of a struggle for me to find out that. Because believe it or not, I've never actually had to repair the front end of a GTV. That's this bad before, so I've never actually had to remove that whole front panel complete. So it's going to be a nice little challenge for me on a Monday morning. It's going to be a lot of drilling, a lot of messing around, so it's probably going to be a nice little montage for you now until we can get that darn thing off.
So after about half an hour and about 30 different welds, I've managed to undo the front panel from the car. And that's only one side and that doesn't include all the, um, the bumper mounts and everything. So let's show you. So there we go, that's all loose. What I'm hoping with this side, as this side isn't that bent, I can straighten this part up here, put that back in a line, and then I haven't got to remove the rest of that down there. And that will make my life so much easier. I've still got to bend this part straight, but that shouldn't be too difficult. And now onto the, the fun part of this side. Now I'll tell you what, I absolutely love doing accident repair videos and accident repairs in general because it's so therapeutic taking something which is so mangled and everybody had written off as a pile of scrap and turning it into something which is pretty again and as you can see by the end of this series which I've already filmed as I'm, as I'm editing this video together but it does come together quite nicely so do please tune in for the rest of the videos. Now the drill bits I'm using are just standard basic metal drill bits. You can buy specific drill bits for drilling out welds, but they're like six times the price of a normal drill bit and probably last just as long as a normal drill bit. So I do tend to just use these standard ones, which are a lot cheaper and they work just as well, as long as you don't overheat the drill bit while you're working. And this little tap did come in handy just getting into the little crevices just to separate the welds because sometimes when you're drilling through the welds they don't completely come apart so you just need to tap through them to give yourself a little bit of breathing room to get that panel out. leaves us down to this bit here it is actually a little bit loose so hopefully it shouldn't take much to get this bit off Now I've done a bit more digging, um, this leg is a little bit worse than I thought. Stripped everything off it now so I can see everything a little bit better. And let's show you. Down here, where unfortunately that's where the arch liner was, so I couldn't see how much that had kinked in. So what I think is going to be the best option is going to be cutting the wing off here and joining the donor front end. So I'm pretty sure I can just cut that off and weld it all on in one piece. Uh, the toughest bit is just making sure I cut right and line it up. For base the line that I've cut it off at on here. If I use that circle there as a line to guide me for lining it up, we should be able to get it pretty much bang on. So nerve wracking time now. I have marked up that chassis leg now, so I need to cut that leg off. Hopefully I've done it right so it'll roughly line up. Um, so let's get it done. Can I only cut once?
Well, there we go. We have a very rough cut and a very front end aligned to the car. Um, still, shed loads to do um, to get it all lined up properly, but it's been a good day's work. I've done more than I thought I would, to be honest, to get the new one offered up. It would be nice if I could tack it into place, but I've still got loads of measurements and stuff to do. So let's have a quick look. I've still got to make all that match there, so it's all going to be looking untidy. Um, and the same here, it's still all uh, out of position, but we're back in there and it won't take much to uh, get that looking straight and pretty again. Whew. So I've done a little bit more than I thought I would do today. I've got it all cut off, the other one offered up into position. Uh, I've pretty much spent the whole day doing this today. Um, right now, some people are going to say in the questions, why did I not remove the full leg and take the engine out and do it all perfect and as it should be from the factory. It comes down to budget at the end of the day. I mean, this customer's not going to be spending much more than two, two and a half grand getting this car back on the road. Uh, and it's one hell of a lot of work. It's, it's going to take me ooh, a solid week probably getting this thing back together. And um, that's why you have to cut a little bit of corners to get it back together again. If we'd have took that engine out and took all the ABS pump off and everything to get that chassis leg fully removed, We'd have probably been talking four or five grand to get this car repaired at the end of the day, and it's just not worth it. So we are doing this on a little bit more of a budget. The customer is aware of everything that's going on with it. I've sent him pictures, videos, and everything. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, just not enough budget to get this repaired to 100% original, but we're going to get it as damn close as we can by cutting that little bit of chassis leg there. So fingers crossed. So I'm sure you've got loads of questions. Please comment them down below, and I'll get to them when I can. Hi right, there guys, it's now the following day from the end of the last GTV video and if you remember in the last video we literally just offered up the front end to it, I ran out of time, that was it. So what I've done since is I've put the bonnet on and I have uh, done one single weld to hold the front end on and a couple of pincer grips just to uh, hold it into position and I'll show you where I'm at now. So just got a couple of grips holding that in line there and we've literally just got one crappy weld there holding the front end on and I'm supporting the engine with the jack, jack, jack because the main jack. attachment points are on this panel so the bonnet's on all I've literally done is lined the bonnet up and put these clips on down here and fingers crossed it shuts As you can see, it goes down there, and the line there is okay. And on the other side, that goes all the way. I could probably go in a little bit more on that side, or the other side out a bit more. But yeah, everything goes in. I've taken the fixing points off for the bonnet cable so the bonnet can be open and closed, so I do need to make sure it opens and closes okay. So now I just want to put the headlights in, put the front bumper on, just to make sure everything lines up still because I imagine that that front corner down there is still going to be a little bit bent so I'm going to have to bend it back into shape. If any side is going to be well out of a line it's going to be this side. So let's pop this headlight in and see if we can get the three bolt holes to match up. Almost, as you can see, that there and that there. So the headlight needs to come over that way a little bit. There we go, see that hole there, that one's in there, and that one there. So now I've moved that, does the bonnet still close? No it doesn't. It's a shame. Hinge and try and get that a little bit more into line. What I'm doing now is I'm just having a feel for where the hole for the bonnet should be 
and I'm just going to try and line it up with my hand a bit of project, a guesstimate of how far it needs to be bent and luckily enough it didn't take much and uh, I was in the right position. So we'll start by rebuilding the front end by putting the radiator support on. It's always a good sign that the front end is aligned well when you can get all four screws in for the radiator support. Now just a quick weld on the front panel so we can remove the grips so we can fit this front bumper. Now GTV front bumpers are a pain in the backside to fit because you've got two clips at the front and then you've got two clips at the side which you all need to get in together. If you don't put them in together you can't get the side clips in so the side of the bumper will never fit correctly. It will also help if there's two people to fit a front bumper but unfortunately I didn't have that. Now we're on to fitting the first light and the second light and now we're ready to see if this all lines up. Which of course it did, did you ever doubt me? I am quite pleased with that. Do a little bit of spacing on this side just to pull that bumper out but that's plenty of room there to do that. And again the line there, once that's all bolted in that'll be perfect. And the bonnet closes. I do need to raise it up a little bit on the driver's side. But there you go, I am happy with that. Impressed with how easy that was to line up. And everything just went together nicely. So I'm gonna weld it all up off camera now. So I wanna concentrate on welding, don't wanna be bothering with filming it. Um, so join me uh, in a second when it's all welded up. A few moments later. The leg is all welded on now. I haven't welded on the driver's side yet because I still want to fiddle with that and make sure it's all in a line before I do that. But at least the engine mount can go back on now. And technically it can be driven around a bit. So I do need to move it from the position it's in because it's blocking everything in the workshop. So uh, show you what I've done. All welded all the way around. I have stood in some areas I've done like a double weld. I am going to leave my welds proud because all of that is hidden beneath there and by grinding it down you also weaken it a bit so at least there's some more metal there so if it does have an accident again it's all nice and strong there and we'll never break there again so now i want to wash my face because i've got a bit dirty and then i'm going to remove the front bumper um i want to get that bonnet cable on and make sure the bonnet opens and closes okay and then we're ready to weld the rest of it up and then it's prepped for paint so pretty good going today on goes one of the clips for the bonnet cable. On goes the cable itself now. Right, let's see if it works. As you can see, I'd already started welding the uh, support for the bonnet on. I just need to finish off doing this last bit of welding by welding all the leg in position. But what I'm also doing is using various hammers and, and spacers and pry bars and everything just to get everything nice and flat. So it looks nice and pretty when we've got some paint on it. Now just cleaning off the weld so it's all nice and tidy and no bits of debris on there. So we can put some primer on there and then we can start putting a bit of seam sealer on. Oh, just cleaning off the extra seam sealer. look at it outside in the autumn sun now and as you can see there it's all welded up all seam sealed and you can see the weld where I've done it all down on this side here all nicely covered up so by the time it's all finished you'll never be able to tell that it was in an accident at all 
So there you go guys, so if you want to see a longer version of this video, join my channel from £1.99 a month where you'll get early access to videos and longer videos for you to watch without uh, so much cutting action going on. So now we're on to the final push, just going to give the whole front end a good degrease. It's probably going to get several degreases before I actually get to priming it because it is quite uh, dusty and disgusting after probably 20 odd years of oil and grime build up. Now using an abrasive pad on the grinder just to get rid of this little bit of rust so I can then treat it and then stick some acid edge primer on it to stop it from coming back. And once we've done that we moved on to 240 grit sandpaper trying to get into all the little nooks and crannies so we can then get some more acid etch primer on it and then give it a thick coat of primer. A few other little spots of rust that was also treated off camera. Now we just put some polythene all over the car to protect it from overspray. And you will also notice that I don't bother covering up the bonnet because something else happens later on in the video. Right, already done the acid etch primer and started priming the rest of the front end. So we just need to finish off doing the passenger leg now and then we can let it dry and put some paint on it. Observant people there will notice I have left the bonnet open switch in place because nine times out of ten the little bolts which hold them in will snap off so it's easy just to cover it in a bit of masking tape and leave it there. Now it gets its first coat of silver paint. Gave it three coats of paint and then one good thick coat of lacquer or clear coat. And then left it to dry overnight. Now the rebuild begins, starting with a brand new radiator. Also off camera I fitted a headlight, fitted the bits of wiring loom and a few other bits and bobs before I started installing the AC pipe. So I was a little bit worried I should have done those first before the radiator but I did manage to squeeze them in eventually. Tighten up the nut connecting it to the heating system. And then the pipe which goes from the condenser to the aircon pump. And there's another little one hiding down there which comes from somewhere else. I can't remember where from as I'm doing the voice editing. cooling system while it was all apart I did make sure nothing had been damaged nothing had been cracked or pinched 
it was all okay just used a few brand new jubilee clips and then we were ready to uh, fill it up with water Now if you remember from the first video we did have a connector that was damaged and ripped off so I've got another connector for it and I'm just soldering it on now. So I've just fluxed the wires and I'm now just putting some solder onto each of the wires so I can then melt them together and they should join nicely. There is my uh, salvage connector off another scrap GTV. As you can see the wire colours do match up. What I do need to get, I need to get like a, a little tiny sort of crocodile clip so I can hold these wires together without having to burn my hand like I am here. See, I've been a See, I was being a proper man and not wincing at the pain of me stabbing myself with a boiling hot soldering iron. What I also remembered to do for a change was to put some heat shrink on the wires as well before I soldered them together. Flipping the heat shrink over now, eventually. Just need to re-solder that joint a little bit because it had separated and I couldn't get the heat shrink over. Eventually, it does go back on. Trust me, it does. Eventually, it goes back on. Normal method is just to shrink it together with a soldering iron. Bigger heat onto it and it will soon shrink. There we go, all done. Just fitting the last few pieces now, the headlight connectors, the headlight, the airbox, just making sure that there's no leaks or anything like that, and making sure it wasn't cracked from the accident. We're all good, it is in good condition. Not forgetting to tighten everything up. Right guys, we are almost at the finish line now. A couple of things I've got left to do. One of them is to secure the intake pipe, which is rattling around. And the other parts are fit the silver front bumper I picked up. And also the silver bonnet. I was going to paint these up, but looking at how the colour difference between the exact paint match I had done, it seems as though the silver has aged, so I didn't really want to paint them just for it not to match, and then I could blend it in half into the car, but then the front half of the car would look so much brighter than the rear half. So instead, these came up on Facebook, so I snapped them up. Um, yes, they probably weren't the, the cheapest, but um, it saved me the hassle of painting them, so... We just need to get these last few bits done now, and um, she's finished. See if it closes. I imagine I'm going to have to line it up again. I 
through it, 10 minutes of opening and closing the bonnet, pulling it forward a smidge, pushing it back a smidge, opening the door to undo the bonnet yet again. I eventually got there and it fits perfectly. Felt like Goldilocks adjusting the bonnet. This time it was too high, next time it was too low. The third time it was just right. Well, I was planning on finishing the video in this episode, but unfortunately I've had to wait for an expensive part to arrive, meaning it delayed filming the end of the video, and it's now getting close to the end of the week, so I thought I'd have to leave it here. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back guys to another video on my channel. We are back with the final instalment on the Crash Damage GTV. It is now all done pretty much, so we just need to finish off with a cam belt, variator service, MOT, and a nice little test drive. So uh, join me in this episode while we get it finished. Now onto the old rocker cover. Now there is a little bit of damage on the front of this, but I purely think the reason this is leaking is because this is a little bit old it's still got some flex in it but not as much as a new one so we'll change this for a nice shiny new one as you can see it's just that little bit more flexible than the other one so i'm hoping this is the reason why the oil is peeing out the front of it, which is the common place for it to start leaking. Now you're missing a little bit of material there, but I don't think that that's enough to cause it to leak. So I'm hoping it is just this lovely little rubber cover causing all that oil to leak out the front of it. Let's give this corner a clean up because I can see some dirt and dirty oil on it. The cleaner the mating service, the better of a seal we're going to get. So we are now all done, cam belt's done, the service is done, so it's just time to give it a start now and uh, see how noisy that variator is, which it shouldn't be noisy at all. Well, variator's a lot quieter than it was. The tapping you can hear is the hydraulic lifters because they're gonna be dry of oil after not being used for so long, so it should quieten down. Once the engine's warmed up, 
So it's about five minutes later now. The engine has had a little bit of time to warm up, but if you can hear, it's a lot quieter now. Still a little bit of a tick coming from it, but give it 20 minutes to fully warm up, drive it, get it MOT'd, and it should be lovely and quiet by then. So now I'm just doing a few of the MOT related stuff, making sure the washers work. I did actually fit a new wiper on the passenger side as well. A few other checks like blowing up the tyres, making sure they're all road legal. And then we can take it for its MOT. Also cleared the airbag full coats that was on the car as well, unrelated to the accident. So there we go, we are all done with the GTV now. I have just taken it for its MOT. Unfortunately, it did have one advisory and that's a little bit of corrosion on the front brakes, but that's understandable because it's not been used for a month. So hopefully they will clean up or it's cheap enough to get those replaced. So now let's give you a look around it and we'll take you for a little drive, make sure it drives all okay. So there she is in all her glory. So there we go, the last thing to do now is give it a drive and we'll see if you guys can come along with me. So on the test drive I'm listening out for odd suspension noises, squeaks, rattles, making sure the gear changes are accurate, making sure the clutch works and also just making sure it drives in a straight line and has enough power and nothing cracks as you go over the big humps here. As you can see the drive I normally take around here there's loads of road humps and uneven roads so it does uh, give it a good shake down if there's anything missing or uh, loose or broken on it. So there we go guys, all done. Hopefully you've enjoyed this series. If you do need any repair work or any accident damage repair work done, email in the description below and you can contact me to get that done. But uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and I'll just see you in the next video.